Heaven's California Sorry guys, okay so hey, I'm going to be doing another video about, or two Nightmare Files Four, dis four true disturbing horror stories that will haunt you, featuring Insomniac So just went on, I need at like 10 o'clock And I'm about to go to bed soon, hopefully um, But I guess we'll see what this one's about So I guess it's featuring someone else, so I don't know how high or low the voice will be, so I guess we'll see But let's just get into it I'm kind of curious of what to expect. Four disturbing stories. That will haunt me, so hopefully, you know. <laughs> A few years back, my friend and I worked at the same restaurant by our school. One night, we got off pretty early due to how slow the night was going. Okay. We decided to go to Foot Locker since some new Jordans came out recently. Okay. And the store was on our way to both our houses. The store closes at 9, but it was 7.30 at the time. It was already getting dark outside. As we approached the store, we saw a group of guys standing on the outside of it, but we didn't pay any attention to them. I asked the people that worked there, are the new J's still in stock? And surprisingly, they said yes. So I bought them. Oh, okay. My friend said I shouldn't buy the shoes right now, being that we are walking home during the night with a big foot locker bag. I shrugged them off, and I did it anyway. Oh, you After I paid for the shoes, we walked out and started heading home. Just to paint the picture, the foot locker is directly across the street from a heavily wooded area, and foot locker is a row of buildings like a plaza. Anyway, as we were walking, we noticed that the group of guys that were in front of the store were dialed down the street on the street corner. Yeah, they're following So we crossed the street before we got to them. We were now on the same side of the street as the wooded area. As we got over there, we noticed that some of the guys from the group also crossed the street. Then one of the guys said, what's up? And my friend said, come on, man, and shook his head. Then looked at me and said, I told you not to get the shoes. I was confused. Then the guy started walking toward us, and one asked me, what size shoe do you wear? I replied, by what? Then my friend told the guy, don't worry about it because it's not your size. Then the guy laughed and said, it's not even like that. And all of a sudden I hear someone running, running out of the woods toward us. Oh my God. Then the guy that was talking reached for my bag, and a few guys ran out of the woods. I remember fighting the guys off, and then I woke up on my back and saw my friend laid out next to me, getting stumped in the head and his body was shaking. Oh shit. One of the guys grabbed the one that was stumping my friend, and they ran away. I remember it was about ten of them. I rolled over, sat up, and looked at my friend. He was making weird gargling noises, and his face was bloody. I tried waking him up, but I couldn't. So I stopped the next car that went down the road because... I couldn't call the cops due to those guys stealing my phone. My friend was hospitalized for about three weeks. Only had a few stitches. I wish I would have listened to my friend that night. But I think those guys were looking for anyone or any kind of trouble anyway. Like something tells me they would have attacked him anyway, my or them anyway. I went on a hiking trip a few days ago. My dad is a waterfall fanatic. He wants to see as many as possible. So he and I are hiking along a very pretty trail. We're hiking along a river. It's flowing nicely. There's mountains all around us. The trail is weaving around big, beautiful boulders. I'm hiking at most, 30 feet ahead of him, looking for a spot to sit down and have picnic lunch on. And as I round a blind curve in the trowel, I just freeze. Sitting on a stump, maybe 10 feet off to the right, is a guy. But he's wearing one of those colourful badger hoodies. With the hoodie pulled up, he's wearing a Halloween style bunny mask. 
he sees me and stands up right after my dad rounds a corner. We are all three sizing each other up in silence and my dad addresses him. What's up, buddy? The masked man then tips his head as though he's deciding what to do with us. He then finally speaks, saying, Oh, not much. You aren't the guys I'm facing for. You have a good day. And then he turns and jogs off quickly, strapped on his lower back is a large hunting knife and a pistol. Oh my god. We lose sight of him pretty quick. We hadn't seen a soul on the trail all day, and we've been there for almost four hours. Needless to say, we leave the waterfall for another day and turn quick. Once we're off the trail, we report it to the local forest service and police, but they say they can't do much aside from keep an eye out for any suspicious activity. Basically, he didn't do anything. The guy had no backpack or water or anything, which makes me think that he either had it stashed somewhere or was camping nearby it. I hate to admit it, but I desperately wanted to ask the guy who he was looking for and why. That, 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 that story was kind of creepy, but not like terrifying. This story happened about five years ago. Christmas. It was Christmas day around 1.30 in the morning, and I heard my upstairs screen door open. I wasn't thinking much about it. Probably that Santa was dropping off gifts. Or that my mom was grabbing a couple things to put under the tree. Yeah. My twin sister and I were the only ones awake at the time. So we heard everything that was going on. We heard the Christmas tree and the gifts being moved around. Slow, quiet footsteps moving around the house. And a beam of light moving around the living room. Now, who was it? The light was getting closer until it reached the top of my steps. And it just stopped for about five seconds and left. Nice. Since I was only ten at the time. My first thought wouldn't be that some intruder came into my house looking around. Okay, yeah, 10 years old. So I had an idea and I wanted to see if there were any presents under the tree. My sister said I should wait until the morning and that it should be a surprise. Thank God I listened to her. About five more minutes of hearing things moved around my house, I heard a loud ear piercing sound of my mom screaming. I bolted up. I ran up the stairs. And when I was halfway up, I can hear her saying, there's a man in the house, over and over. Thank God the man got startled and ran out of the screen door. I saw my mom and my sisters getting hysterical over the situation. We called the cops, and within three minutes, the police showed up. Only my sister and I heard everything, from the moment the man broke in, to him moving stuff around, and to the sounds of my mother screaming. We really couldn't give a good description of the guy, since we didn't actually see what he had on. All my mom saw was that he was wearing dark denim jeans and a black hoodie with the hood up. We later found out that the man also broke into my grandparents' house, who lived down the street. Oh, shit. The scariest part of this is, when before all of this happened, my sister heard footsteps above her window and thought it was a raccoon. Oh, my and God. And waved at it for some odd reason. But now we definitely know it wasn't a raccoon. And if my sister didn't tell me to go upstairs, what would have happened? What would have happened if that guy saw me by myself? Oh my god. Funny enough, it makes sense that I get through 10, they're not going to assume it's some robber, so. Let me start by saying that I love camping. Anytime my friends and I come home from college, we loaded up our cooler with beer, grabbed some gear and go screw around outside. Unfortunately, when I was actually at school, none of my sobriety sisters or friends ever wanted to go with me, so I often suffer withdrawals from camping. One day, the weather was way too nice to waste, so I grabbed my gear, hopped in my car I borrowed from a buddy and drove to a spot that secluded yet within safety of civilization, if I need to get help. Camping also creeps me out though, but that feeling is like always outweighed by the joy of it. I don't, I don't like it. So, 
I make a little camp and a fire going. I hadn't brought all that much, but I'm enjoying myself reading and looking around the area, that sort of thing. It's creepy to I me. I got the feeling that I'm being watched and stopped dead in my tracks. I hear a twig crunch over to my right, but see a doe vault from a hundred feet or so in front of me. I laugh at myself when we're back to camping. I just kept freaking myself out though, hearing sounds just outside of the ring of light cast by the fire. I always get inside my head, so I shrug it off and kept whistling and just enjoying myself. Around one, I decide to get into my tent and snuff out the lantern. I've been slamming beers in the most unladylike fashion and smoking cheap cigars until I passed out. Bad. It's around 2am. I hear footsteps. They sound pretty light and sort of timid. I think to myself that it's a deer or some animal. Maybe a raccoon, but I'm on guard. About 30 minutes of sleep and with one eye open later, and I hear a rubbing sound, and the tent fabric being pushed in a bit. I don't know what to do. No, no, no. I'm paralysed with fear. I desperately wanted to go and get the knife and stab this person, but I think maybe it's one of my buddies messing with me. It's not. Suddenly, it stopped. I was starting to feel more secure because daylight's coming in about two or three hours, but yeah, two or three hours. I'm sure as hell not gonna sleep. Just get All of leave. a sudden, it's about four o'clock. I realise I should have my boots on in case anything were to happen. After having stayed up and keeping alert for a little longer, my friend's car alarm goes screaming. I sprint out of the tents. I got about two steps out before something grabs me around the mouth. The fuck? I open my mouth to scream, but instead, the person stops me. I've heard that people perform insane feats of strength with adrenaline rush. In my case, I just climbed down. His finger popped off almost. He screamed and pulled his hand away. He took off, running down the hill. The hell was that for? And into the opposite direction. Like who the hell are you even I take off. I must have looked ridiculous, but I didn't care. I quickly make it into the car and speed it out of there, calling up my friends, telling them what's happened in the police, and get some real clothing. When the cops get there, they check his out. The cops went out with a light. They brought me back some of my things that I left there. It's kind of hard to understand him just a little bit. But what made me most scared is that right next to the tent was a gas can. A lighter fluid had been poured around my tent. He, he was about to set your house on fire. The kicker is, they never caught the guy. So somewhere out there is some crazy guy that's looking to make fires and tents with people in them. Oh my god. It's pretty fucked up. Hey guys, so sorry again, just like two, two, two videos ago, my sister came, came upstairs, the door was closed and everything, like I don't like when people hear me doing videos, it just makes me nervous. Um, so basically now I'm in the basement again, but it's a bit quieter than it was the last video, or two videos ago. But yeah, so like I don't like camping, so like that, that last story, I don't really love, like camping in general, so like I would not go anyway, but yeah, like I don't, I don't do camping, I feel like it's kind of creepy, especially by yourself, in the middle of the forest at night time, like no, de definitely not, never gonna happen, no. Oh, definitely not. Like, I don't... No. I can't... Yeah, that's not... No, that's not happening. So the fact that someone had tried to set him on fire, that's fucking ter terrifying. Because my sisters go camping, or my sister. So to find out that she freaking got killed in a fire, that's not what's something I want to fucking hear. So, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely probably going to tell her to not go camping anymore, but that's not going to stop her, to be honest. But, yeah. I guess that's creepy, that's scary, even if with someone I would not want to do that, because it's nighttime, it's creepy, like, you don't know if anybody's there, you don't know if it's an animal. Like, even even at home, like, oh, I'll, I'll hear a noise, and then, like, even if someone's outside, that's still someone outside, that's not, not even someone inside. 
and, and I'm like, oh my god, and, and I'm like panicking. So imagine me outside with other, actually other people with there. So that's definitely no. But I hope you guys like this video. Um, I will see you guys in the next video. Uh, I'm finally caught up on Nightmare Files, even though it was only two videos, but yeah. I hope you guys like this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.